also going to hear some of our crazy tour stories. Our first crazy tour story is uh, one that makes me personally very emotional in a good way because <laughs> we played the Whiskey A Go Go the night of the Let Me Kill My Stir uh, Memorial and the Sunset Strip was packed with people and the show was completely sold out and we were playing we were touring with Metal Allegiance at the time which is our manager David Ellison from Megadeth's other band and uh, so it was already surreal Corey Taylor was there and and freaking Danzig was there it was crazy um awesome. so after our, we got done with our set uh, we go to walk out uh, around the the strip a little bit and we see this man just totally swarmed with people I'm like oh, who is it that's Dave Grohl <laughs> so we just follow him all the way and he goes up to our dressing room um, and we're like we can go back there too. We're like, let's just go into our dressing room just to hang out you know everyone was like trying to get back there and we're like yeah we have passes we just walk right in here. so I was too scared this guy is a huge idol of mine. He is for basically everyone, but for me, I'm a little bit over obsessed. Um, and Sydney, someone pulled me towards him, and he was just like, "Come here, Dave." Really? Was it? Yeah, Dave, Dave was like, "Come here, girls." Right? I thought it. I thought it was. I thought it was Sydney. Me. I was. Oh, I was. Yeah. I, I, Sydney. I went up to him. Really, I don't know him because I. Approached yeah, because because Sydney always pulls me out of my comfort zone. And, um, so he he like looks at me. He goes, "Come here, you little shy girl with a hat on," and he pulls me because he's this big hug. I'm just, <laughs> I'll cry for five minutes. It that was great. Cry. Yeah, that's and we gave him a CD and he put the CD in his pants. He was really It was a good time. time. That's yeah. cool. Um, okay, next tour story. Um, actually, one of our first real like tour experiences, we went to Mexico uh, for the super cool festival. Um, Megan and her mom, they do that every year. So we uh, went with them to play and that was a good time. Um, but we were driving around Mexico. I don't know what we were doing. But we had my mom's work van that said American made real big and proud on the side and we got pulled over twice that day um these super corrupt really sketchy uh police we were like not in the touristy area of mexico no we were, like, out in, like, and they could like we stuck out like a sore thumb in our big american-made van and we got pulled over twice uh but our friend robbie he actually lives there and his grandparents like own the town basically and he had to like get out and like talk to these like sketchy police officers and like talk us out of like these crazy like fines and tickets so that was fun. My mom got pulled into a police station and they were gonna like hold her captive. It was fun. Yeah, it was were, a good time. They were like, you either pay a hundred dollars right now or you go to the station and pay three thousand or something. And we were like, no, no, that's not real. So we were just like, okay, fine, we have to pay it again. I don't even know. It was weird. Yeah, we played it was the fun. tourist card and we were like, oh, okay, well we'll just pay the hundred here. We don't know that that's wrong. We don't know. Don't we're know. basically we're paying just, off these police. We were just police. trying to get away. Yeah, because it was like we had things to do and people to see and places to be. We did not. We were just going to the beach. <laughs> okay, another crazy tour story actually just happened kind of recently in this big rolling turd of an RV we have. Um, we were in Texas and we were driving and we were on a freeway and all of a sudden <laughs> this is my mom and she was the one who actually um, it happened with. Um, and we were driving and there was this big toll booth and Sydney was like, okay, we have to stay on the left. So we went in the left toll booth, which is where Siri you're kept not telling supposed me, to go. She kept in. saying, keep left to merge onto this. And I was like, oh, well, we can't go in the iPad. City, this lane. is my story. I know, but I, I <laughs> wanted don't know the whole to tell. Story. I wanted to tell. This is keep my going. Story. Just keep going. Okay. All right. Go toll ahead. Booth. Go ahead. Um, we got stuck in a toll booth. And we went in the toll booth, and all of a sudden we're like, can we make it? And we have like, okay, we'll just put our mirrors in, like, I think we'll be fine. And then all of a sudden we hear like scraping, and we're like, oh my god, this is horrible. And we're like, okay, we'll just go a little more over to the other side, like, it's fine. And then we hear scraping on both sides, and we're like, this is it, we are stuck. And then, um, there's cars behind us. And so we were like, well, hello, we cannot back out, we cannot go forward. And so we like call the toll booth operator dude, and he, does not speak uh, like very good English at all. So he's like trying to tell us like what we need to do, and we're like, we can't understand anything you're saying, sir. I'm sorry. And so we had to call the police, and the police came, and they like blocked off the lane that we were in, shut down like traffic for like two lanes, and then had to like back us out. And then the toll booth operator guy that did not speak very good English was also trying to tell us how to get out, and ended up getting us more stuck in the toll booth. And it took us an hour to get out and we were in the toll booth, and that is when you learned that you're supposed to go all the way on the right because big RVs are not supposed to fit in toll booths. No matter what Siri tells you, stay on the right. <laughs> That's the lesson we learned. Another tour tip, don't listen to Siri. She's wrong all the time. Yeah, use Google Maps. Use Google Maps, it's so much better. Yeah. Uh, my tour story is just kind of an overview of our whole tour experience. Being women on tour, you deal with a lot of creepers. <laughs> um, 
always carry a knife with you, kind of bottom line. Uh, Sydney talks about like carrying a knife like she's actually going to knife someone. I would love to see someone actually knife Well, if they see a knife in your back pocket, I would they're love less to knife likely. someone. They're less likely. We all have mace, knives, those like cat puncher things. I am a cat puncher. Heavily armed. I like yeah. my mace because it's like I could do that from far away. Yeah, tour stories with creepy people. Um, one time we got offered shots and Alex is like, let me go ask my mother, as in, yeah. I'm not old enough to drink. And he didn't get the idea, he's like, oh, okay, okay, let me know. And yeah. like, like, he actually expected the mother there. to We're say, like, leaned over the stage, he was like, hey, yo, girls, like, you want some shots? And Alex was like, uh, uh my mom? And he's yeah, like, I'm like, okay. let me ask my mom. Squirrel, there's a squirrel. Where? God, you're just stupid. <laughs> but yeah, we just, we, I'm like, hey, let me ask my mom. And he, like, took it totally seriously. We're like, no, that meant go away. I'm, like, it was weird. 10. Uh, yeah, we, not 10. Another but. one, we were playing somewhere in, like, northern Texas, and uh, people we were playing with, long pinky nail, and he's, like, talking about the show or whatever, and as soon as my- ah, ah! You scared me! You scared the shit out of me! Uh -huh. I love bees, but they do not love me. Um, <laughs> where was I? Uh, basically, we got offered cocaine. Yeah, we got offered cocaine by a man with a long pinky fingernail. And people always ask kind us of to go to parties with them afterwards, and we're like, we're very boring. We enjoy sleeping a lot. I'd like to go back to my bunk. And oh, read. do you remember when we got offered to go to that rooftop party? We went, this we guy offered. wouldn't stop talking about it, and he like made me put his number in his my phone, and I was like, I don't want to like, know. <coughs> and he kept being like, there's a rooftop party going on. Do you want to come? And I was like, no, thank you. And he would not quit the freaking rooftop party and I was like yeah we're honestly just gonna go back to our hotel room and sleep for the rest of the night yeah we don't really do anything like a shower read a book we like to eat after shows and <laughs> sleep after shows yeah. one time in Albuquerque we went to a restaurant with some locals and there was just throw up everywhere and apparently that's what happens in Albuquerque <laughs>